KTAR News is doing an even deeper dive than we have been doing. We've been covering the border for a very long time, but 48 hours at the border, uh, learning more from ranchers and people that live on the border. And joining us now is the sheriff of Yavapai County, David Rhodes. Sheriff Rhodes, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Mike. It's good to be here. Let's let's talk about the, the Sheriff's Association. The governor has said that she's had conversations with border sheriffs and has she talked with the Sheriff's Association to help mold her opinions on what the state can and should be doing about what's happening at the border? Well, we have had conversations with the governor, which she's met with the sheriffs a few times. We're requesting to meet again. Uh, to the extent that it's molded her opinions, really, she would have to answer that. But they have been open to dialogue, and they have provided support. Uh, there's a number of bills that are moving through the legislature right now that we would like to see uh, pass including the state budget, which would uh, the appropriation for the sheriff's association, for the local agencies, the local border support. We'd like to see that funded again this coming year. So we'll see. We'll see uh, how much impact that we've had on her opinion. Uh, speaking of legislation, was the sheriff's association supportive of the piece of legislation that was vetoed by the governor? Yes, the sheriff's association took a position of unanimous support um in that piece of uh, legislation which was look that was just the ability if you saw somebody crossing the border at a place that was not an official port of entry that you could detain that person and charge them with a crime for trespassing it was it was no more complicated than that and that's a tool that local law enforcement doesn't have right now can you explain to the audience, uh, give us some numbers if you have them, of hours or expense and what it cost your agency and the sheriffs across the state of Arizona just in dealing with this issue that the federal government should be dealing with? What does it cost you in time, man hours and, and dollars to, to uh, do what you have to do on this issue? Well, the time and, and the man hours, the, tax, the local taxpayer dollars, are astronomically high expense, Mike, and we're dealing with that all the time, and it's very difficult to quantify. But I will tell you one piece that's very easy, uh, a piece of data that's very easy, and that's what we call the SCAP numbers. And it stands for, I forget the what the acronym stands for, but it's essentially uh, people who are in the country illegally that end up in the county jails and the sheriffs have to pay for the incarceration. And we submit for reimbursement, and the federal government only reimburses us um, pennies on the dollar. But I can tell you the deficit between what the sheriffs have spent and what the federal government has given us over the last few years is more than $30 million. That's just one example of local taxpayer money that's going to deal with our failed border policies. I know that you, uh, you know, being in Yavapai County, not a border county, but you are dealing with sheriffs, but you also deal with border issues. Um, we are, Arizona is the fentanyl superhighway. And most of the fentanyl coming into this country comes through Arizona, and you're dealing with it in your county as well. What is that doing to your county as far as overdoses and dealing with arrests and confiscation of this drug that also is dangerous to anybody that comes in contact with it? Well, you're absolutely right, and, and Arizona is the superhighway. In fact, uh, the most recent data, uh, I believe, indicates that, you know, more fentanyl has been seized in four Arizona counties than in 48 states in this country. And if that doesn't scare you to death, I don't know what is. But every single county, every single sheriff, every single law enforcement agency across the state is dealing with this issue, particularly here in Yavapai County, and we've used the state funds to really scale up our task force, to really go after traffickers and whatnot. Um, but, but we're seeing it everywhere. You know, a million pills a year seized for the last three years uh, uh, here in Yavapai County as one example. All the sheriffs are seeing that. And uh, we, you know, we were very disappointed that Congress was not able to do anything or they refused to do anything. Our federal government has failed us. We're working with the state legislators that are trying to do what they can. you got a divided government down there. But the main message from the Sheriff's Association is that we're not going to give up our fight to protect the citizens of Arizona. Uh, Yavapai County Sheriff uh, David Rhodes is joining us as the president of the Arizona Sheriff's Association. So since you're speaking about federal legislation, did you have any input or did you support the piece of legislation that was co-written by Senator Sinema? We had no input. Um, we had no negotiations. We waited uh, for months for that p 
piece of legislation to be released. When it did get released, we happened to be in Washington, D.C. for a sheriff's conference, met with a number of the legislators. Ultimately, the, that legislation, because it did not secure the border first before it created all these other uh, workarounds to immigration, we believe that that would have simply caused uh, a, another surge to come across the border uh, that, that nobody was prepared to deal with. So we did not support that piece of legislation, no. All right, so let's. I just need to ask you about what is happening in Arizona. If funding were to run out, and there are people that are talking about the, the federal funding running out at the border, how concerned are the sheriffs in Arizona for street releases, and what would that do to the jail capacity and to the jobs that your deputies have to do across the state? Well, we're very concerned about it, and we're requesting a meeting with the governor. We're requesting a meeting with legislative leadership to have a discussion about next steps because we have not gotten any communication that this funding is going to be restored. And you got to remember, uh, no matter which side of the issue you fall on, you think this should be happening or not or whatnot, this is moving people who have been released by the federal government into the into the state illegally. It's moving them on to other states. And if you don't have the ability to do that, the, the ability for or for for migrants or people that are in the country illegally to get out of here and get where they're going is gone. And so that's when you can start to have the street releases. And imagine this. You're you've you've come here from another country and you're dropped off in a city where you don't know anybody, you don't know where you're at, you don't speak the language. That is ripe for, you know, low level petty offense to begin with. That's ripe for humanitarian issues. That's right. It's just a terrible, terrible uh, way to do this. And the sheriffs and the local governments, we don't have another lever to pull. The federal government can simply just drop people off wherever they want and make it a local problem, which is exactly what they're doing. We don't have that luxury on the local level. We have to deal with this issue. So the final question, Sheriff Rhodes, is what would you say to the governor or to the state legislature? And I'm sure you've said it, but can you tell the audience what are the tools, one or two or three things that you've said to them are the tools that would really help you do your job as long as the federal government isn't? They need to increase resources to the local law enforcement agencies. We need more canines, more deputies, more technology. They need to be the ones to fund this. This is, should not be put on the backs of the local taxpayers. That's number one. They need to use all, any and all political influence that they have to force the federal government to do something to secure our border. And they need to pass the legislation that gets tough on the cartels, that gets tough on crime, that gets tough on the drug dealers. That's what has to happen because we have to send a message. Arizona is not the place to come uh, and break the law, set up your organizational activity, uh, activities, traffic fentanyl, traffic children, sell children for sex, run guns, all these things. Arizona won't stand for it. Sheriff, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks for the work that you do, and I hope you'll come back soon. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Mike. Take care. All right, that is Sheriff David Rhodes from Yavapai County, head of the president of the Arizona Sheriff's Association. Pretty, uh, pretty informative on what they're requesting and what they need and why they need it. Thanks for watching the Mike Broomhead Show. Tap to watch and listen to the new season of Amazing Arizonans, a KTAR News podcast. You can also click the button in the middle to subscribe.